Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. to the GSMC Football Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, it's Thursday. You know what that means. We got Thursday Night Football going on tonight. I mean, I can't stand Thursday Night Football. I think it stinks. The games are never good. I mean, you see that Bengals and Ravens game last week. I mean, the Ravens were never really in it. Again, they were down by like one score at one point, but again, never really in it. Even that Eagles and Falcons game to start off the season stunk too. We'll see if maybe the Jets and Browns can save us today. Be a bit ironic considering both teams have been terrible for years. But either way, I want to introduce Jeff Malinoff. He's going to be doing the show with me today and I believe tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Yeah. So Definitely. Jeff will be doing the show with me today and tomorrow. He'll be talking football pretty much. A guy who gets to hear my complaints, rants, and all that. And yeah, that's how the show's going to go today. He'll be on it. We'll be talking Jets, Browns for the first segment, giving our thoughts, preview it all, talk about the Browns without Josh Gordon. Second segment, I want to talk about the Lions. Me and uh, Jeff will be talking about them. They've started off 0-2, haven't really looked too good. Patricia's going up against his, I guess, former boss, Bill Belichick. So we'll be talking about that. Third segment, me and Jeff are going to talk about the teams who have disappointed so far in the first two weeks. I mean, it is early, but it's always good to overreact, I could say. And then for the fourth segment, we will be talking about anything else that crosses our minds as far as the NFL or football for that matter. So good to have Jeff on. Should be fun having another person on here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. So we got Jets, Browns. Browns favored by three points here. I mean, I get it, but... Neither team, I'd say, well, I'd say the Jets have probably looked, I guess, the best out of the first two games. What do you think, I guess, as far as, what do you think about both teams out of the first two weeks? Well, I think, uh, first and foremost, the Browns' defense has been pretty good as of late. They've gotten a lot of turnovers. Just anything positive with the Browns is something that you got to look at. And they've really stacked their defense in the last two drafts. Um, And then they went Baker Mayfield in the first pick, but they also got Denzel Ward in the fourth pick. So they have a good defense. They have Jabril Preppers. They have uh, Miles Garrett. They got some stacked players on there that can make an impact. The Jets obviously have Sam Donald, the USC quarterback, who had a rough uh, first pass when he threw that intercept pick six against Detroit. Mm-hmm. But then he he like he lit up the Lions and got up into like forty eight points. So it was something. It was something very. Um, uh, positive for Jets fans to look at, but then he played pro, uh, pretty bad football uh, last week. So hopefully he's going to bounce back, but I won't take the Browns' defense lightly. Yeah, him. you make a good point about the Browns stacking up the defense. It's kind of, kind of like something the Jacksonville Jaguars did over the years with Miles mm-hmm. Jack and all those other guys. And, I mean, look at them now. Now they're pretty much beating up the Patriots again. I mean, we got to see what happens in the playoffs between them and the Patriots. I'm sure we'll see that rematch again. But either way, yeah, the Browns... They have a great defense, it seems. I mean, I was always pretty confident in their defense. I mean, obviously, you see they're bringing in guys. People were kind of, I guess, giving them heat a bit for taking Denzel Ward with the fourth pick instead of Bradley Chubb. Obviously, that seems like it was a decent pick. I think Ward's already got a few picks this season. I mean, the Browns' biggest problem has been their offense. Tyrod Taylor, I've been a big defender of his over the last few years. Well, from last year, I guess, to this year. Didn't like the way Buffalo treated him. I mean, he took him to the playoffs for the first time after 20 years. Now they're the worst team in the league without him. But he hasn't really gotten it going. You could tell Browns fans and I guess the national media is pretty anxious to see Baker Mayfield out there. And I'm assuming when we do end up seeing Baker Mayfield out there, I think he'll have kind of like a Deshaun Watson effect where, well, not effect, but he'll kind of be like Deshaun Watson. Where's the kind of quarterback either he's going to light it up or he's just going to stink out loud. I don't think there's any real 
development there, meaning, like I said, it'll be he'll either be a hit or miss pick for the Browns. And I mean, if they don't hit on this one, I say it sets him back a few years. But I mean, we got to wait and see till that ends up happening. I think I think I think the Browns have learned in the past not to put your first round quarterback out into the game, like first game of the season. They've done that so many like they've done that time and time again, and the guy just collapses under the pressure. And I think they're. I want them to take their time with him. I think if he's like, usually when you see a rookie quarterback, if he's developed and if he is a backup for a good period of time, he becomes a better quarterback. I mean, you can compare Alex Smith and Aaron Rodgers when they were both drafted. One's considered the greatest of all time, and the other was just considered a above average quarterback. Yeah, I get that. And I mean, yeah, you do mention the Browns. I mean, you look at them how they used the Sean Kaiser last year. Again, I'll always say it. I'm still on the Sean Kaiser bandwagon. I thought he need, I think he needs a few years to develop, and he had no business starting for the Browns week one last year. And plus the way they used them when they had Cody Kessler and um, I can't remember who the other quarterback was back there. By the way, they had no one. Yeah, they kept um, switching him in and out. It seemed like he was coaching for his job rather than trying to develop a quarterback. So, I mean, that pretty much stunted his growth there. And you look at the Jets. You mentioned Darnold that first game against Detroit. Yeah, he played well. I mean, he went for 198 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. And then against Miami, they made him look like a rookie. I expected that. I mean, the New York media definitely does know how to hype up their future. I mean, they did it with Mark Sanchez. Sanchez, obviously. They did it with Geno Smith, and that was a bit of a bold one there, given. I mean, it was Geno Smith. I did not know what people saw in Geno Smith. Neither did I. I mean, he had a good game every maybe twice a season, but... But West Virginia, like, they didn't have a much competition in their conference. Like, it, like they, they didn't have any, like... I don't I don't believe they when he was playing quarterback. I don't think they played any top 10 teams. Yeah, definitely. And then I think too with West Virginia quarterbacks, I think it was Geno Smith as the next best thing and then before that you had Pat White. Now we got Will Greer over there at West Virginia. We'll see if he could actually shake it up a bit and actually be a good quarterback coming out of West Virginia, but like I say, yeah, with the Jets week 2 against Miami. Miami, I think people don't give them enough credit for the team that they have currently. You don't have your stars or anything like that. Landry's over here with the Browns. Sue's over with the Rams, and then they traded a Jai during midseason last year, but they did well, I think, to put guys in roles that they excel in. Miami's got a solid defense, so I don't really knock Sam Darnold for his performance last week. I mean, he is a rookie, so you are going to see those little rookie lapses where he throws a pick in the end zone after the Jets' defense recovers a fumble from Ryan Tannehill. I mean, TJ McDonald baited him into throwing interception there. And like I said, I mean, Jets fans, the New York media just needs to pump the brakes. Let a guy develop for once. You don't always need to turn him into a superstar after one game, and especially that Detroit game. I mean, yeah, the Jets played well, but let's not forget that Detroit... I mean, I think basically quit in that third quarter, giving up 31 points, and that's basically what blew the game open. Before that, it was a close one. I think it was 17-17 or 24-17 before that. So, And their I mean, running game was also on point. Yeah. Isaiah Crowell was having a day, and I know that because I had him on my DraftKings fantasy, and he did really well for me, so I thank him for that. Yeah, and Isaiah Crowell, I've always been kind of skeptical about him since he, because he was with the Browns and all, it didn't really do too much. But, I mean, leaving the Browns seems to revive your career. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. you can, oh my gosh, there's so many players that come out of the Browns and become all-stars. Yeah, especially Taylor Gabriel, you look at him. But you move on now to the game itself. Like I said, Jets, Browns. I think we got the color rush unis going on tonight. I mean, these are... I don't think they do. I think they stopped doing that because I watched last Thursday and they didn't have color rush. The NFL ended up um, giving them an option. You can choose to wear them or you don't have to Oh, anymore. okay. Yeah, so it's pretty so much... Some of them are bad. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You're Jaguars right about that. is the worst one. You don't like the Jaguars one? Well, it's a brown color that thinks of something not good. So yeah. I would... The Jags um, are the Browns one. The I, the Browns one is... That, that's Cleveland. I mean, that's yeah. their, that's like... I wish they did something different. Oh, like yeah, the, I know you're... I know you're I was thinking of I, for some reason I was thinking of the Jags color rushes being like the teal on teal, but I forgot they got the mustard yellows. I forget about that. It wasn't so you're even right. like mustard. It was, yeah. like, it was like a brown mustard or yeah, something. Yeah, I know it was exactly really what bad. you talk about. I don't like they barely tried with some of them. Yeah, but yet they tried with like the Giants ones. I think are the coolest mm -hmm. because they changed the helmets too, and like the 49ers, Um, there was like pictures and stuff before the start of the color rush, and they had a gold. And I was like, oh, an all-gold jersey. That would be cool. That would make sense for a 49ers team. Mm -hmm. But then they just went with the all-black that they just released as their alternates. It's literally the same jersey. So it's like they didn't even try. Yeah, you can never go wrong with black on black, though. Mm -hmm. When you look at the game tonight, I mean, the Browns, I'd say right now, 
Actually, I don't know. I can't really tell you who the better team has been. I mean, the Browns have played well. Defense has played well, but they don't have a win. They blew it against the Saints. Zane Gonzalez, I mean, missed as many kicks as you four. could. He missed four? He has two extra points and two field goals. If he makes two of those, two, one field goal, one extra point, they win the game. Yeah, and then after that, they tried telling us how he had a groin injury. I mean, I get it. You got a groin injury, that's fine. Don't play. If you're going to play, then he you lost can't. lost his job. Yeah, you can't really use the groin injury as an excuse. And, I mean, you're a kicker, so I can't really feel bad for you losing your job there. And you're Hugh Jackson had no idea. He had no idea about no it? no idea about the injury. I mean, which I feel like if you're the head coach, you should know about stuff like that. Yeah, but it is Cleveland, so that's nothing new over there, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. And then you look at the Jets. I mean, week one, they look great. Like I said, New York media is hyping them up. Jets fans are yelling Super Bowl. The next week, they come back down to earth. Miami, I mean, was up 20-0 to zero at one point in that game, and it was basically the Jets in second the entire time. So I'm not really sure who I think is the better team. I'd say out of Tyrod Taylor and... Sam Darnold. Darnold has been the better quarterback so far. I mean, Tyrod's always going to be pretty safe as far as not turning the ball over too much, but I just like the way Darnold plays. I think he's more of the complete quarterback. You look at the running backs, it's kind of a push at that point. And the receivers, Anuawa, Robbie Anderson, Jermaine Curse, not big names or anything like that, but guys who do a job well. And then you got the Browns who have Landry, Antonio Callaway. You got David Njoku at the tight end spot, but no more Josh Gordon. What do you think of them trading Josh Gordon away to the Patriots? Um, I honestly, it took me by surprise. I think it took a lot of people by surprise. Um, and they traded him to the best team in football, and they traded him for only for fifth round pick. I think they could have gotten a lot more for him from other teams. I don't know what. What they were thinking about, I don't know if they just wanted to get rid of him just because he was um, just a problem in the in in the uh, out off the field, mm -hmm. or I I don't know what the situation was. I thought he he came back, he played relatively okay, relatively well. He caught some passes, but giving him to the Patriots, giving Tom Brady another weapon, that I don't know the I don't know why you would just. Give him up. He was your number one. He or I guess Landry was your number one, but he was your gonna be your number one, and you trade him for a fifth round pick. I don't know what the situation was, but I think they could have gotten a lot more for him. Yeah, and you look at it. I think um, they ended up pretty much last draw being he was at some promotional video shoot or whatnot, injured his hamstring there, and then I saw too that he showed up late to the team facility the next day or something like that, and it wasn't himself or something like that, quote unquote. Yeah, and I guess I mean. People are going to kill the Browns for this if he ends up doing well with the Patriots. But you kind of look at it. The Browns usually keep guys around like like this around too long. I mean, this is a proactive move by the Browns. It's a point where, let's not forget, they're trying to change up the culture out there. I mean, they've gotten 1-31 in the last two seasons. And, I mean, the team has been a dumpster fire for the last 20 years. Something's got to change, and you can't really keep guys like that around. you got to keep guys around who are going to show up on time, not get hurt at promotional videos or whatnot. And I get it, Josh Gordon. I mean, if he ever gets back to... I mean, his top form, he will end up being a top five receiver in the league. But even then, so people were really going crazy about him going to the Patriots. But how do we know he's going to be able to pick up that playbook and really fit in with New England? I mean, there are a lot of the guys who run, they have a lot of guys who run short routes out there. They're not more so a team who goes deep. Again, the exception was Randy Moss. And I get people are trying to compare this trade to that one. But let's not forget Randy Moss. Is, There's no compare. You cannot yeah. compare him to Randy Moss. There's. Can't only one. Him. Yeah, not can't compare him to the greatest receiver of all time. I mean, yeah. arguably that's my opinion. When you look at Tom Brady's career, he hasn't had a lot of elite. He was only one elite receiver in his career, and that mm -hmm. was Randy Moss. And when he had him, he went sixteen and zero. Yeah. So imagine if he had just uh, he to make some smaller receivers look like all pros. So with Josh Gordon, a guy that is versatile and can get that pass, get that ball, I think if Belichick knows what he's doing, which I he probably does. This guy's going to be Pro Bowl. Yeah. We'll see what ends up happening. As far as the game going tonight, I mean, getting back to that, I think for my pick, I'm going to go with the Jets. Logic tells me to go with the Browns. They played well, just haven't been able to pull out a win. I mean, they're at home. Like I said, Vegas has them as three-point favorites. But I like the Jets' defense also. I like Sam Darnold. I think they're going to get it done. Who's your pick for tonight? I got to go Jets also. Because, like, it, it, the Browns' defense is doing well, but their offense is – there's something there that's not, like – Not clicking? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And the Jets, like, I think Sam Darnold's going to maybe not have a career day, but he's got to get the job done. Mm -hmm. 
seems like Darnold's kind of got that it factor. Like he's not obviously what you want him to be right now. Yeah. Eventually he'll develop into it, but like he's got he's got something about him that you know he's going to be pretty solid. So we're going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up, me and Jeff are going to be talking about the Lions, look ahead to that Lions and Patriots game, and pretty much talk about Lions being on too. So stay tuned for that, and we will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between four and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Again, I got Jeff Malinoff with me doing the show with me today and tomorrow. We've spent that first segment talking about Jets, um, Browns going on tonight. I also talked about Josh Gordon a bit. Now we move on and we talk about a certain team in Detroit who has a first-year head coach, Matt Patricia, coming from New England. And I think we like to see these coaches in New England and think they'd be able to succeed somewhere else. And I think we get kind of caught up into the quote-unquote patriot way and think that these coaches are going to bring this over to their teams i know i did that but it doesn't always work out and it seems like so far in the first two weeks it hasn't really worked out at all for the lions i mean you look at them defense is terrible they've given up 78 points total in their first two games stafford has been i guess it's an easy way to put it not great they don't really run the ball and this team just doesn't seem good right now at this point I mean, you had them getting blown out by the Jets, like we mentioned in that last segment, 48-17. They played San Francisco last week, lost that one 30-27. You want to give your thoughts on that game last week? Uh, yeah, like, it started all 49ers. Like, um, it was just the Lions had no answer. It was 30-13 to at one point, and the game, it was, oh, I thought it was going to be over. But then, all of a sudden, like, Matt Stafford go comes back and goes to his like Pro Bowl form. I mean, he threw for three hundred and forty seven yards and three touchdowns, and um, that just shows like how much the Forty Nine ers secondary needs help, um, and that they're struggling. But when you look at the Lions' defense, it was putrid. Like Matt Breida had one hundred and thirty eight yards rushing, and now he's leading the league in rushing because of that one game. And if you're making a guy who was undrafted look that good. You, you got some problems. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's funny you mentioned that. But uh, you look at the Lions. I mean, I'm looking at Stafford, and I've always been a Stafford fan. I mean, Stafford's always been a weird quarterback to judge, too, because he looks the part. He's got the stats that play the part, but he doesn't have the win-loss record that you would like. He's never really been good. Well, his teams have never really been good against teams over 500. He's always pretty much beat up on the little teams. And even the times that he has made the playoffs, he's made it three times. He's been in and out each time, pretty much the Marvin Lewis way. So I'm not really sure what to think of him at this point. I've kind of backed off my stance of Stafford being a top five quarterback. I mean, I think right now, looking at it, I'd have Rodgers number one. Then I go Brady. Actually, I won't even name rank him or anything like that. I'll go Brady, Rodgers. I still put Russell Wilson in there. Really? Yeah, I still like Russell. I mean... He's been struggling, though. He's had... Well, he lost a lot of his weapons. Yeah, and he's never had an offensive line, really. He, receivers, I mean, he's had Doug Baldwin, but other than that, I mean, he had Golden Tate way back when, but Golden Tate's been out for a few years, gone for a few years with Detroit, and then the defense now, I mean, it's kind of like Russell Wilson's got to be the guy who does everything there, so I kind of... I'm not giving him a pass, but I see why he struggled, I mean, against the Bears. I mean, that interception, that pick 60 through... I feel well, like the Bears that, defense has improved it. Yeah, it's but I feel like that's one Khalil where you got to see a, Mak- a Makamura and pretty much realize, okay, not to throw it here because he's going to jump the route. But yeah. getting away from Russell real quick. I mean, we got, like I guess I got Rodgers, Brady. I still throw Russell Wilson in there. Breeze I've kind of shied away from. 
I'm not sure who my last two quarterbacks are, actually. Stafford might sneak in there. I don't think Big Ben is a top five quarterback anymore. I would say Kirk Cousins has really improved. Kirk Cousins like, has, but I'm going to hold off a little bit. Wait, on, wait yeah, till the wait season a keeps bit, going? Because he hasn't been playing really well. I know last week he played well against the Packers. But I'm going mm-hmm. through each division. I mean, I, I think Wentz, you could throw in there, actually, when he gets back. I mean, that second season was ridiculous. He is coming back this week. Yeah, He's returning. Definitely can't wait for that. I know Eagles fans can't either. Matt Ryan, maybe you throw him in there. I guess Matt Ryan's kind of in there by default if you don't want Stafford. Well, when you have Julio Jones as your wide rec- go-to receiver, like uh, the the week one matchup against Philadelphia, uh-huh. that uh, that last red zone drive, he kept throwing it to Julio even though other guys were open. Like yeah. they did, they did this like screen pass on the opposite side of the field, and this dude had a perfect. If he he, if he sh- saw that window, he would have passed it to him. But he threw it to Julio, who was covered like completely. So he try he. Relies too much on Julio, I think. And that cost him a bit of the rankings, I would say. Yeah, on that drive, yeah. I'd say before that, though, they weren't really looking toward him. So I guess it was like too little, too late to be looking for Julio. Should have been earlier on in the game. But, I mean, that's a whole Just predictable, though. Yeah. But, like I said, that's a whole different story. But you look at it, I mean, Andrew Luck, I think, is someone we could start inserting back in there. I mean, this Colts team looks completely different compared to last year, even if it's been two games. It's ridiculous how well this guy can elevate the guys around him. But we look at Detroit, like I said, I mean, 0-2. It's just things haven't gone their way. They were never really in it to begin with. Like I say, if you're in second place, the entire race, it was never really much of a close race. No matter how close you get to the guy in first. That's pretty much what this 49er game was. I mean, 49ers were dominating. Detroit made a bit of a comeback, but the 49ers ended up getting the job done. So you look at the Lions. Barely. If you remember, they had a uh, Jimmy Garoppolo threw a very awful pick, yeah. which got called back from a defensive holding. So I think the Niners got more lucky than anything else because if that pick happens, that game either goes in the overtime or they get, or they take a game winning drive. Yeah, that's true. But it's just kind of like I mean, you kind of don't deserve to win at that point if you've been down for so much. It's kind of like it's either you get it done for entire four quarters or I mean you can try and come back, but again, it's not always going to work out. So we look at the yeah. Lions and Matt Patricia. I kind of get the feeling that this is going to be a year where the Lions are just terribly bad. Terribly bad. I mean, it's only week three coming up, but like, it, and it's more of a gut feeling here. They just give me that feeling that it's not going to work out. I'm kind of getting the vibe of maybe Patricia, and again, this is all premature here, but maybe Patricia doesn't make it into a second year given the Lions were 9-7 and seven last year, okay? They didn't look great or anything like that, but still managed to pull off nine wins. The Lions can't go at least 7-9, 8-8 and nine, eight and eight this year. I mean... It's obviously a completely a down year compared to the year before. And even then, I mean, Jim Caldwell, I don't think... Do you think Jim Caldwell was a great coach or anything like that? Uh, he, he was a solid coach, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a barn burner or anything like that. I think they went to Patricia because of him in the Belichick system. And he, he was the coach of their defense. Their defense was pretty good last year. Oh, consistently good for the last couple of years as him as defensive coordinator. But it's that thing with, like, when you look at... A Belichick um, assistant coaches, they always go to another team and they don't really do well. Yeah, I get that. And then you look at the Lions too. I mean, you have to carry on Johnson. For what? If you're not going to run the ball, I mean, what's the point of even, even having him out there? You got carry uh, uh, on Johnson, Theo Riddick, LeGarrette Blunt, and Detroit still refuses to run the ball. And that's, I think, been one of the biggest problems as to why Stafford hasn't really been able to beat these top teams is that it, the offense is just one-dimensional. I mean, it's ridiculous. You have to carry on Johnson. Obviously, you have him there for a reason. Obviously, I'm assuming he was there to fix up the running game. I think the last 100-yard rusher the Lions had was Reggie Bush way back when. Oh, my God. I forgot he was on their team, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And, I mean, Matt Patricia was brought in to get this team into the playoffs. I mean, you go 9-7 and seven the year before. You fire your head coach. You bring in a new one. Obviously, his job is to get to the playoffs. And if they don't do that, it's another wasted year. And I wouldn't fire him prematurely, though. I wouldn't fire him after one season. I think give him like give him two to three seasons. If the if the wins are like if it's like eight and eight, nine and seven, still Mm -hmm. like obviously he's like not doing completely terrible. So maybe give him some more of an opportunity. But you're right; they have all these running backs. Like they got Legarrette Blunt, who is a solid running back, and they should really utilize him more. Mm -hmm. They do not utilize him. At all. They couldn't utilize him at the end of the Niner game because he got ejected for that push. But you got to control your players in that situation. But he has these good running backs. And he if he uses them 
or the offensive coordinator uses them to their extent, Stafford will have less of a load, and I think that will make him better. Yeah, definitely. And another thing, too, is with the defense. I mean, Matt Patricia, I think working for the Patriots kind of overhypes you a bit. I absolutely. mean, we all know that Bill Belichick is the best coach in the league. I assume you assume so. Oh, well. absolutely. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, we both think Belichick's the best coach in the league. You get the best quarterback in the league in Tom Brady. But the assistants, Josh McDaniels, I mean, Matt Patricia, I feel like we kind of overhype him a bit. We've seen Josh McDaniels, I mean, in Denver. That didn't really work out as far as him being a head coach. Was going to become the Colts head coach, so we I thought. I think they were like 6-0, and and then they didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah, they were, it was one of the biggest season collapses. But when you, it's not just like Belichick and Brigger the greatest right now. They're probably the best ever. Mm-hmm. Like, Bill Walsh and Joe Montana, you can say, is great, and all these other, uh, like Aikman and Johnson. But Belichick and Brady have been consistently good for over a decade. And I don't think any other team, other coach quarterback combo can say that. It's been, what, 2001, so 17 years of consistent winning two. seasons and Super Bowls, five Super Bowls, uh, victories. And that's not like a fluke. You can say, oh, Spygate and all these, mm-hmm. like, Deflate Gate and all this stuff. But. You're not that consistently good if you're not the one of the greatest. And that they are hands down like the greatest of all time. Yeah, and I was born in ninety six. I mean, all I've known in my football life is just basically Tom Brady, Tom Brady yeah. Bill Belichick. They run the AFC. I mean They, they run the NFL. Yeah, I mean, pretty NFL, much, yeah. actually, yeah, to say that. But, yeah, I think we kind of overhyped these coaches because, I mean, Matt Patricia going to the Detroit Lions, even I bought it to that. I was like, oh, yes, finally, there's going to be some – um, how do you say stability in that organization? They're going to fix things up because Detroit's never really been a great place. I mean, Barry Sanders left early, retired early because he didn't want to play there, and so did Calvin Johnson. And, that was heartbreaking. Yeah, all he, of those are heartbreaking. It, it stinks. I get why. Cause, I mean, Calvin Johnson did try coming back a few times, but just didn't want to play for Detroit. And obviously, Detroit saying we're not going to trade you. I get that, but I mean, as a fan, I was a little bit selfish here. Pretty mad at Detroit for not. It, letting it's just go a huge else. what if. Yeah. If Barry Sanders was on another team, like if he was drafted by the Packers in his draft class, because they were the pick before the Lions. Mm-hmm. Go, imagine him and Brett Favre working together. Imagine Calvin Johnson on another team. It just there's so many what ifs. These these two guys should be Hall of the Hall of Well. Barry Sanders is a Hall of Famer. Calvin Johnson should be in the Hall of Fame soon. Mm-hmm. And if they were just on better teams than the Lions, they could have Super Bowls. And yeah. it's really a shame they don't have that. Yeah, I mean Detroit doesn't seem like the Nicest place to live. I mean, I kind of lumped that in with Buffalo, the Clevelands in the world and all that. But, I mean, we'll see what ends up happening with the Lions. We'll talk more about the Lions tomorrow along with previewing the Sunday night game, given, I mean, they are playing Sunday night. And it's kind of ridiculous how the NFL did give the Lions two primetime games in their first three games. But it's the Patriots are playing. I think they're, it's, not, it's not giving them the primetime. It's giving the Patriots the limelight when they're going to – Yeah. Pro, it, it, they, they probably thought it was going to be a, a slaughter. Yeah, then you got the Patricia uh, Belichick storyline there. So oh, absolutely. We'll see what ends up happening, but this defense stinks. I mean, the running game is non existent, and Stafford has just been kind of shaky so far. So, like I said, we'll see what ends up happening. I think Patricia's going to be more motivated than any other game in this in this season, though, because it's against Belichick. I think any any Patriot uh, former Patriot coach that comes against Belichick are more motivated than anything else in that time. Like mm-hmm. when McDaniel's was the coach of Denver, he was so motivated, and like as soon as they beat the Patriots, he was like running around like he just won the Super Bowl, and then they collapsed. It's like that's that's their Super Bowl is facing Belichick. Yeah, and then you got it too. I mean. Patricia's been seeing heat for the first two games, given how bad his team has looked. I mean, he's still getting questions. I wouldn't say that's about. his fault, though. You're the head coach, so you're going to get most of the Absolutely, but I wouldn't say everything should go to him. Well, no, obviously not. But you look at it, I mean, he's been getting heat from the media and all that. And then, I mean, he's going to constantly get asked, well, how did it work in New England? Belichick this, Belichick that. So you're right about the added motivation. They, they want results now, and that's not the case in the situation. Yeah, so we'll see what ends up happening. Either way, for the next segment, me and uh, Jeff are going to be talking about some teams who have disappointed us. I mean, disappointed the league so far in the first two weeks. So stay tuned, and we will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety.
All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. So far, me and Jeff have... Is it Jeff and I or me and Jeff? I guess it's a podcast. We're not Je- writing. Jeff so. and I. Yeah, That's Jeff and I. But I guess since we're talking into these mics, it doesn't really matter. If I was writing it down on a piece of paper, it'd be Jeff and I. Mm-hmm. But we do things, I guess, a little different. Either way, Jeff and I have talked about the Thursday night football going, game going on tonight. You fan of Thursday night football? I mean, as a fan, it's cool because it's a game on Thursday night, but... I mean, it's, it's, beneath the surface, do you like it? As a fan, I'm like, oh, nice, Thursday night football. But it's like, I, I guess they get more time off the weekend. I'm not sure how the practices work after mm-hmm. winning every Thursday night game. But a lot of players, you know, complain because the, the, most of the injuries happen on a Thursday night game. Yeah, because you look at it, I mean, you got your game on Sunday. You probably practice Monday, Tuesday. You're probably traveling, I'm assuming, Wednesday. And then you got the game on Thursday, so it is a short week. Again, that's why it benefits the home team a lot. So that's why I said logic usually. It's, I mean, it's basically Browns, a business decision. It's yeah. nothing about the game itself. It's a, it's for it's money. It's yeah. about money. That's because they have another time. They have another prime time slot. And uh, if you have Monday, you have a Sunday night, Monday night, and Thursday night, you're going to get a lot of money for those commercials and all those other things. Mm-hmm. And so, I've always thought too. I mean, if we're going to have like a we're going to take away Thursday night football, maybe move to Saturday. But then again, you get college football going on from the in the oh, fall. Call, yeah, you don't want to yeah. set college football. They would, they would not do well. Yeah. Maybe a Friday night, but that's high school too when mm-hmm. you think about it. So but, I guess Thursday is the only day you can really have it. But do you even need to have it? You don't. You don't. I, like, I'd be perfectly fine with us just having Monday night and Sunday night and then obviously the Sunday games early on going on. I mean, we don't really need Thursday again. As a fan, we both said, like, you enjoy it. There's a game to watch, but... I mean, it's never really a good game. Yeah, especially tonight. I mean, I'm I'm kind of scared with this Jets and Browns game. I mean, it could be one of the worst. It could be good though. We'll see if these it's, two teams can deliver. It's just gonna deliver. be there. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just gonna it's just gonna have to end. It's just a game. It's not like oh, it's two great teams going at it. It's like oh, it's the Jets and the Browns. Like one team hasn't won the Super Bowl in 50 years. The other one has never had won a championship since the 50s. I mean, mm-hmm. what they're both mediocre at best. I think I'd be a little bit more excited if maybe we had Baker Mayfield versus Sam Darnold given. I mean, it's the number one pick when it gets the number three, but that won't be happening. Yeah. So we did that for the first segment. Second segment, we spent it pretty much bashing the Detroit Lions, deservedly so, I'd say. And then now, we'll talk about some more disappointing teams. Let's start off with the Giants. Giants are 0-2. I mean, you got Evan Ingram, Odell Beckham Jr., Sterling Shepard, who I think is a very serviceable number two receiver, Saquon Barkley, who... I mean, the offensive line really hasn't let him get going, but when he touches the ball, I think you could tell there is something there. He's got some explosive explosiveness in his step. He's done some breakout runs, yeah. even with a horrible offensive line. Yeah, and then you look at the defense. I mean, they brought in the defensive coordinator from Arizona last year, or brought him in this offseason. Defense has been... I'd say the defense has done their job. I mean, Dallas didn't really get anything going in that second matchup. I think it was just more so the Giants were just bad. And looking at the Giants, Giants' first game was against the Jags, and I think even then, so they played well. So, I mean, it's really been, I guess you could say, an offensive line at Eli Manning prom for the first two games. I've always been a big Eli Manning defender. I mean, I think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. What do you think about Eli? Uh, well, with the two Super Bowls, I would say he's going to the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. But when you look at his like regular season stats, they're not very good. Like, he he's... Like when you look at the teams that went to the Super Bowl, they were like ten and six, both of them. They mm-hmm. were very average. They were they just, oh they had double digit wins. They didn't. I don't believe they they maybe won one time in their division mm-hmm. in that Super Bowl run. But he's play. He's always like you can always see him play like so average. Like he's just like he has so much hype coming out of Ole Miss and being the son or brother of uh, Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. and you get all this hype. And if he doesn't, if you take away those two Super Bowls, I guess that's not fair to say. But if you take away his like record against Tom Brady, I guess, mm-hmm. then it's like, what has he really done? I wouldn't say he's a bust. Like I wouldn't say that at all. But I would say he's not. He's not to the level of his brother by any means. And I think that his stats have proved that like when he's off, he's really off. Yeah, and you're right about Eli. He doesn't really look the part. And, I mean, it's pretty difficult to ever be Peyton Manning. I mean, Peyton Manning is one of the best to ever do it. The dude's a yeah, genius. It's an unfair comparison, I know, but it's like brothers, and you're always going to get compared by your brother. Yeah, and then you look at it. Eli, though, has crept up on the all-time quarterbacks that leaderboards. I think he's top six in passing touchdowns all-time and top seven 
in uh, passing yards. So, I mean, like I said, I mean, I completely get how people say that he doesn't really, like, he, like, his numbers are high and all that, but it just doesn't, like, it's like, how? He's not a leader. Yeah. He doesn't feel like a leader. I I think some players have said that in the past. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe or maybe not. No, I've heard that, too. Yeah, but he just, he doesn't, like, his brother, like, he mans his line. He needs, mm-hmm. And Tom Brady is one of those guys that has that intensity just, and fire. You walk and, in and you command that respect. Exactly. Yeah. Like, Tom Brady has that passion. You really don't see that passion with Eli Manning. He's just like, uh, I'm here. Eli is a weird quarterback. Like I said, he's got all the stat, like all the all-time stats and all that. But it's just, you look and it's like, wait, how did that happen? How did he get all the way up there and all? I mean, he's got the two Super Bowls. But I do get what you're saying. Helmet catch and that amazing catch to Mario Manningham in 46. Mm-hmm. But like when you look, even look at Super Bowl 46, they shouldn't have even really been there because the 49ers were 13-3 and in the NFC title game and two punt fumbles. Yeah, shout one out to Kyle in, Williams. Oh, <laughs> and uh, the knee it grazed off his knee, and mm-hmm. one punt in overtime that that sealed it. Like the Niners were doing fairly well without those two turnovers. I think the Niners go to the Super Bowl in that in that situation. Mm-hmm. So they they got they had Lady Luck on their side without I mean, question. Eli Manning is basically the Baltimore Ravens. Regular season, you're not going to really look the no, part. Absolutely not. Postseason, though, you don't really want to play them. Oh, yeah. I completely agree with that. Yeah, but yeah, like the Giants have been disappointing this year. I think Eli Manning, he just doesn't have it anymore. Like, I don't think he's even capable of taking a team to the playoffs, given how poorly he's played. Plus, I mean, it doesn't help the fact that his offensive line has been terrible. Well, there was rumors they were going to take a quarterback in the draft. Yeah. And they just went with Barkley since, I guess, they were thinking Eli has one more season in him, maybe. It's possible. I mean, I thought they should have went quarterback too. Probably should have went with Darnold. I thought Barkley is a generational talent. He's a, he's something special without question. And I'm putting my tinfoil hat on here real quick. But maybe Pat Shermer knew Eli was pretty much done and figured we draft Barkley here. We won't be great this year given Eli doesn't have it anymore. We'll have a high pick. Maybe we'll, we'll go for a quarterback in the next year draft. Maybe like a Will Greer, like I said, out of West Virginia. Because, I mean, you add any quarterback to that offense, you have Barkley behind him. The thing is, this draft, this was a quarterback draft. Yeah, that's true. So, and like you I don't said, really want to pass up, like, Josh Rosen or any of those guys. Yeah. So I'm not sure what – they. I don't know what, like, top-tier quarterbacks will be available. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they'll have the uh, – upside that a lot of these guys in the draft had like even Lamar Jackson that would have been a a, like maybe not number two pick but maybe trade and get that 32nd pick like the Ravens did but there's just like you gotta you gotta look at the future Mm -hmm. in the draft obviously and they really just looked at this season yeah I get that like I said that's why I put on my 10-4 cap I'm just kind of fine trying to find some reason as to why they would do that but I mean we'll see I guess what ends up happening with them like I said they've been very disappointing I'd say right now they've looked the worst out of all of the four teams in that NFC East, another oh, yeah. team. They're not winning the NFC East. I don't think they're. I think they're bottom of the NFC East. Yeah, I think so too. I was really. I thought Dallas was, but after watching the Giants week two, I mean, that was a terrible game too. That yeah, was thirteen was to boring. twenty. Is not very entertaining. That was Hall of Fame game material right there. Oh gosh. And then you look at the NFC South. Another team has been disappointing. Is not the Panthers, the Falcons, or the Bucks, which kind of surprised me with the Buccaneers. But it is the Saints. I mean, I think we could say. I mean, again, it's early, but I think we could say after two weeks, the Saints have looked the worst. Out of all four teams. You almost lose to the Browns, granted, and you you made Ryan Fitzpatrick look like an all-pro quarterback, mm-hmm. a Hall of Fame quarterback with those numbers, and Drew Brees is not doing his best, and that's really hard to say because I think Drew Brees is one of the greatest, mm-hmm. and he really hasn't played to his what he should be playing to. Yeah. And Ryan Fitzpatrick is like, and Drew Brees probably switched bodies or something. something I don't know. Something like that. Uh, but I don't know what what happened with Ryan Fitzpatrick and making the Buccaneers look like the greatest offensive team in the NFL at the moment. Yeah, the guys about to start a quarterback controversy. But you look at the Saints. I mean, last year I kind of looked at Drew Brees and was like, something's off with him. Okay, I, like I know they pretty much just switched their philosophy to we're going to run the ball, we're going to play defense, and then that'll benefit Drew and all that. So I guess maybe because like last year, statistically wise, I think that was his worst season in New Orleans. And again, I'm talking just statistically wise because they still did make it to the playoffs and probably their running backs were stellar, though. If you have two good running backs Mm -hmm. that are playing that consistently well, you're going to run the ball. Um, Nothing against Breeze. I think it's just you got to go with what's hot. Yeah, especially now because it seems like the NFL is starting to finally go back to we're going to run the ball, play defense. Because I think these quarterbacks in the NFL coming in are starting to – they're not as good. I think we were pretty much – Lucky with the fact that we got to see Aaron Rodgers, Eli Rivers, Brady, 
uh, Roethlisberger. I think I mentioned Breeze already, but like pretty much those Hall of Fame. named all Hall of Famers. Yeah, those Hall of Fame caliber quarterbacks who are going to elevate the guys around them. Now we got guys coming in like the Goffs, the Bortles, and all that. Guys who are good, average to good quarterbacks, but they aren't going to elevate the guys around them. You need to build a solid team in order to go far. It's the running backs that are making guys better around mm-hmm. them. Like you look at Todd Gurley. I think he was a huge uh, impact on that that team last year. Their entire offense last year. Yeah, and this year they're looking even better, and I think he's going to be the forefront, and I think they're going to win the NFC West. Mm -hmm. And you look at the Saints, like Kamara is still doing very, very well, even without uh, his other half being suspended. Yeah, Um, but you're right. Like It's not the quarterbacks, or like maybe Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, obviously, but you're looking at a, now the running backs are like the key focal points in making a team better. Yeah, definitely. And then, yeah, like I said, the Saints have just been disappointing so far to start out. I mean, another team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, you guys have heard me talk a lot about them this week. I mean, it's been storyline after storyline that they've been handing me. Le'Veon Bell, again, I don't have a problem with him sitting out. I mean... We all know that if he was out there, the Antonio was, Brown didn't go to team meetings the other day. Too. Yeah, he wasn't there Monday. I think Antonio Brown. I mean, he's, I think he's the best receiver in the league. But the dude is a huge diva and has really bought oh, into this God. whole diva social with a media thing. D. Yeah. So I don't really, and I think too. I mean, we talked. I talked about it um, yesterday. I think Mike Tomlin needs to be on the hot seat, just given the fact that it seems like he's lost this team. It seems like I mean, if you got Antonio Brown decide I'm just not going to show up on Monday. That's a lack of respect for your head coach. And I think Steelers front office got to kind of look at that and be like, this isn't how we run things. We're not playing well. And I'm not saying you fire Tomlin in season or anything like that. To use Antonio Brown as an example, though, mm-hmm. maybe take him out for a game or something. Like, you see him arguing with co- assistant coaches and all this stuff. It's just like, that's you're, you're, you're almost like a cancer to your team when you're really being hostile to the coaches. Yeah. And. You did mention that, make an example of him. I don't think they could really afford right now to sit him, give it. I mean, you sit Antonio Brown, you basically have no chance to win any game, I'd say. Just Without given, Le'Veon Bell, they had no chance of winning games. Yeah. You tie the Browns. But Brown, you know. Bell's situation, I think, is a little bit different. More, it's a contractual type of thing. Like, I get, I mean, he could He's sign lost that. lost millions in the last couple of weeks, and he doesn't seem to care. Like, you see him out partying clubs in Miami and yeah, I on think the lake and all that stuff. He'll make all that back with some team next year. I mean, some team is going to... Do you think he's going to get traded? No, I don't think this... He should, but the Steelers won't do it. Right. Do you, do you think he'll play it down for the Steelers? Yeah, he'll be back by week eight. I'd say week nine, whenever. Because I know That's there's a, a long time from now, though. Yeah, but I mean, there's a cutoff to where if you you got to be back by this certain way. I think it's like week eight or week ten, possibly. You got to be back by this time because if you are and you play the rest of the season, you can become a free agent. So if he were to just sit out the entire season, he wouldn't be able to become a free agent. So I think he'll be back week eight, week they'll nine, fran- possibly they'll early. Franchise tag him again, though. I don't think they can because I think he's already on a second. Oh, uh, it feels like they would just keep doing it just. F- because just figure out some way it, it's it's getting it's the living on building is getting ridiculous mm-hmm. um if he goes to another team uh that's gonna boost that team for sure definitely i could see him ending up with a team like the colts i mean you he, add him to the colts he's made his offensive line angry yeah and that's not good you should not make the guys that are protecting you mad mm-hmm. and as far as teams he could end up like next year i mean i could see the colts pay them san francisco could really use them i mean that's one where I you, they were in the running for that yeah that's one where i think you had Le'Veon bell then you could afford to have guys like uh marquis goodwin dante pettis pierre Garçon out there because you don't they get a lot of speed yeah so I guess Le'Veon's kind of the guy who like well, pretty Pettis much looked pretty good against Detroit. Like he he had a he had a couple of mm-hmm. those um, passes, and uh, I think he scored a touchdown. He scored a couple touchdowns already, and he's looked very good. Marquise Goodwin's kind of injured at the moment. Mm-hmm. He's he's a questionable he's questionable for uh, Sunday, but the 49ers, like a lot of team a lot of players you hear wanting like Josh Gordon wanted to go to the Niners too, and yeah. like Des Bryant apparently too. Because they're a team that's up on the rise. Yeah, they, they, got they, a they have they they have a very bright future, mm-hmm. especially with Kyle Shanahan being an offensive genius. They claim him to be, and he he's a br- darn good offensive guy. Yeah, I mean, you look at it. I mean, the 49ers were pretty bad the last couple of years after Harbaugh and Shanahan comes in. You could tell. I mean, the culture's changed, and there's just things are different. Like, I'm not sure they'll be like a playoff team this year. I think they'll win about maybe six to eight games, but I'm I say going, nine and seven. Nine and seven, maybe wild card mm-hmm. because the NFC is kind of. Uh, terrible at the moment. Yeah. So they might slip in, but if they don't, it's like 
okay, we're, you're still in a rebuilding period. Yeah, I think their plan with parents was probably come either next year or within the next few years. Because I think mm. Jimmy G still got some developing to do, but we'll Absolutely. see. We'll see what ends up happening. See, see in the two weeks, he definitely has some more to work on. Yeah. But you look at the Giants, the Saints, and the Steelers. I guess those are teams coming into the season with high hopes and just have pretty much fell on their face. We'll see how they do for the rest of the season. But either way, we're going to wrap it up here. Next segment, me and Jeff will talk about pretty much anything else going on in the NFL, anything else that crosses our minds. So stay tuned and we will be right back. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between four and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. So far today, me and Jeff have covered tonight's Thursday night football game. We both got the Jets winning tonight. Second segment, we talked about the Detroit Lions. And third segment, we talked Steelers, Saints, and Giants because they've been extremely disappointing. Saints at least making my pick as far as them not making the playoffs look good. I didn't think they'd be this bad. I got the Saints going 10-6 and six this year, missing out because I had Green Bay going 11-5 and five and getting that wild card spot. Who are, you, who, do you, who are your predictions for the NFC uh playoffs as far i know it's early and all that but it's always it good is early to say but um uh, i'll say the one and two seeds i think um philadelphia is going to take the one seed again mm-hmm. or they they, yeah, they took the one seed last year and see the second seed it's it's such a gimme but i think the vikings i think it's going to go back to the vikings and eagles because they still look as good as they did last year mm-hmm. Um, there might be surprises. Um, like like I said, the 49ers might ease their squeal the way into a wild card spot. Um, the Rams might even take the one or two seed because mm-hmm. they've looked really really well. Their defense has stacked. Um, one team that I think can make a surprise is the Bears. Yeah, I think they can definitely with Khalil Mack. They their defense has changed. Their their defensive like they they are confident on defense, and I think that team can make. I, I wouldn't say win their division, but I would definitely say a wild card spot, like yeah. ten and six, eleven and five. And I've been I've been in on the Bears since like the middle of last season. I saw Trubisky. It, granted, it was on a bad play, the one where Zach Miller, I mean, hurt his leg. But the uh, throw that Trubisky made there, like as soon as I saw him make that throw. And that should have been a touchdown, by the way. I don't know how it wasn't. But either way, when I saw we him... We don't know what it catches anymore. Yeah, when I saw him make that throw, I was like, okay, this guy's legit. Again, I mean, he's got to develop and all that, but he can make the throws. So I figured I was all in on the Bears after that. I like their defense before they made all these moves. I like Eddie Jackson. I mean, I liked how last year they got to the ball quick and forced a lot of turnovers. Tariq Cohen, I liked him. I like Jordan Howard. I thought they needed to add receivers and add a little bit more to the defense, and they did exactly that. And I mean, like you said, they're looking like a team who could sneak into that wild card spot. If the Buccaneers keep playing how they're playing, then they definitely have a shot at the playoffs in their division. But I don't see them consistently doing this well. Yeah, just sustaining it. Their their quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, having over 400 yards a game, I don't think that's going to stay for um, the next couple. Uh, the, for, for the Steelers, how bad they're playing on defense, mm-hmm. I think he's going to go off again. Mm-hmm. Um, so in fantasy football, I recommend picking him in like your DraftKings and FanDuel and all that stuff. But... The bottom line is, if when Jameis Winston comes back from his suspension, is he going to take the starting job, or is Fitzpatrick going to keep the reins? I don't think, it, unless Fitzpatrick has a Ryan Fitzpatrick game, meaning he throws a lot of picks against the Steelers, <laughs> you go with Fitzpatrick. And I think I don't think Fitzpatrick's going to be able to sustain this for an entire season. I mean, you look at his career as a whole, he's had two solid seasons, one with the Bills that got him paid, and one with the Jets when he had Brandon Marshall there. And, of course, he's had good games in between and all that. But I just think, overall, you look at it, he's not going to be able to sustain this. I think we will see Jameis Winston at some point, but not week four. He's a journeyman. Yeah. He's, he's had a journeyman career for since 2005. He was drafted in the seventh round by the Rams. I mean, how many teams has he He's been on five or six teams. Yeah, he's, so he's been around. Yeah, he's, he's been all over the place. And 
when you're that, when you're kind of like that, Case Keenum is a perfect example. Mm-hmm. You had one good year, and now you got that big money with Denver, and you've mm-hmm. been playing very poorly. I kind of saw that coming. He had a great team around him in Minnesota, and he played great himself, no doubt about it. But paying a journeyman that much money, expecting him to keep going when one year out of eight good years, that's that's asking a lot. Yeah, and I think Keenum with Denver has been serviceable, meaning he won't lose him a game, but you're right. He hasn't been as good as he was in the Minnesota, and I think maybe I might be seeing him as a little bit better just given, I mean, Denver's had Brock Osweiler, Paxton Lynch, and um, oh, they've had some bad Trevor Simeon. So maybe those guys' poor play. I mean, you see a competent quarterback come in like Case Keenum. like, oh, wow, this guy's actually pretty good. So maybe that's what it is. But I think Case Keenum does give him a decent chance to win every game. doesn't really blow it for them. And the Broncos have been a team where the defense is going to pretty much be – Von Miller's going to carry that defense. Yeah, so. like how he did in the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning. Absolutely. And then the running game, like you mentioned, um, Philip Lindsay. You got Royce Freeman. Demarius Thomas still doing it. Philip Lindsay's been playing really well, He's though. actually really surprised me. It, that's probably the biggest surprise. Yeah. Like, Ryan Fitzpatrick is surprised, but Philip Lindsay, I think, that came out of nowhere. And no one's really been talking about Philip Lindsay either, I guess, because Ryan Fitzpatrick has been... Has the, been, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Has been, like the most unexpected mm-hmm. rise so far this season. And, and he's starting to dress like Conor McGregor, which yeah. is like really the two games you're getting in your head, buddy. I, I like it. I like it because I think he's not taking himself too seriously yeah. or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. We look at Lindsay. I mean, the dude's quick. He's fast, cuts well and all that. I mean, Denver I definitely has he's quiet. That's there. why he's not talked about as much. Yeah, he's probably. He's a quiet guy. Plus, it's Denver. That's not really a big media market or anything like that. So you have the local media. When they're not good, yeah. Once when they're good, when Peyton Manning was there, everyone was all about Denver. Mm -hmm. And anytime you have a Manning, whether any team, I'm going to get the headlines. But like Case Keenum, I think he can help this team, but I don't see them winning their division or winning going into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And staying in the AFC, eight and eight, a solid eight and eight. I can see that. And then staying in the AFC West, you got Patrick Mahomes, who's been on fire. I was all right. So last season. I mean, Mahomes, we didn't see play until that Week 17 game. And even then, I mean, who cares about a Week 17 game when you're already playing It was a playoffs? garbage game. Yeah. I wasn't, like, I was, like, kind of hesitant. Like, you guys are talking about Mahomes a lot, but we haven't really seen the guy play. And then I see him make that throw in the preseason against the Falcons. I don't know if you saw. It's the one where he pretty much airs it out for 70 yards in the air to Tyreek Hill. And I was like, all right, I'm all in on this guy. Tyreek Hill, Ty- Tyree Hill doesn't get enough credit. Yeah. He is a very lethal rider. He is a very, he's like, he is a weapon. He's I'd a say weapon. He's definitely the fastest guy in the NFL right now. He's almost at that Devin Hester status. I would put him in the top four, top three mm-hmm. receivers in the league right now. Top three. He, he's, he's, God, he's like consistent. Yeah. He's, uh, he's You're always, right. He is consistent. He's always had at least a couple. Like, if, even if he has trouble catching the ball, like, he'll mm-hmm. go on, like, these uh, sweeps outside and take the ball and he'll run for a good 15 yard gain. Like, when you're looking at the most consistent guys the last three or four years, he's been that guy. That's true. He, he's never, been very trustworthy on the field. I've never really thought of him as far as being up there. I've always had my top three pretty set as far as Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, and DeAndre Hopkins. But I might need to think about that more because you do bring up a good point. Tyreek Hill has been consistent, has been doing it pretty much every game for them. And DeAndre Hopkins has had uh, has kind of started coming back. Like He's kind of in that stardom, but then mm-hmm. as soon as Watson's gone, he was kind of... Well, he didn't have a quarterback, granted, but Watson's not playing well right now either. But mm-hmm. he he hasn't had that consistency that Tyreek Hill has. Yeah, you know Tyreek Hill's probably good for at least 90 or 80 to, 80 to 100 yards at least. Yeah, pretty and much that's, every that's something you can trust him with. Yeah. And right now, Mahomes has 10 touchdowns, 582 yards Yeah, I mean, in the last two weeks. I mean, that's pretty darn impressive i think a lot of it too is andy reed andy reed somehow some way just knows how to develop quarterbacks from donovan McNabb. i mean he had michael vick when he got out of prison michael vick looked good with the eagles let's not forget i know it's a name forgotten but for a couple of years or for like a year i think it was kevin cobb he made him look good got oh him a second my, deal. i completely forgot it he got paid big in yeah he Arizona. got him a deal there um Arizona else? paid him, and then he came back to Philadelphia, I believe, I'd say just like Nick Foles did. He did well with Alex Smith. Uh, was Bradford? Did Bradford play for the Eagles under Reed, or was that um, after him with Chip Kelly? I think that was Kelly. Yeah, I think that was Chip. That, that was in. That was in between, mm-hmm. though. No, no, he. Yeah, it was after. It was. It was during Kelly because he got fired up 2012 when they had that dream team with like Vince Young and Ronnie yeah. Brown and all that stuff, and that didn't work out at all. I think mm-hmm. they went like five and eleven. Something horrible like that. Yeah. And then... But Eddie Reed, the thing is, when it comes to the playoffs... Oh, yeah. You 
I, I'm always I'm always against Andy Reid in the playoffs. I'll, that that playoff game last year with the Chiefs. What was it? Twenty one to three against Titans, and they. I think it was twenty one zero. Was it twenty one zero? Zero. That Titans team was not good. No, they were terrible. That was the worst team to make it into the playoffs. I, I don't know. How, like even the seven to nine Seahawks back in like oh nine or twenty ten. Yeah, have with Marshall those. Lynch. Yeah. Oh, it was like Andy Reid just can't get it done in the playoffs. And. Like, it's kind of like Marty Schottenheimer. Do you remember mm-hmm. him? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, he's, he's a great regular season coach. Once you get in that playoff, you want somebody else. Yeah, and, I mean, you lose Kelsey in that game. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that stinks, but it's inexcusable only giving Kareem Hunt the ball 11 times in that game, too. I mean, that's one of the biggest reasons why they lost. But, so, yeah, he made Alex Smith look good. I mean, Alex Smith pretty much started playing well once Harbaugh got there. He leaves, but then goes to the playoffs four out of the five years he's there with the Chiefs. And then now you got Mahomes. The guy just, like I said, knows how to develop quarterbacks. And... I'm not sure if this is Mahomes just being a great quarterback or teams just don't got film on him. Because, I mean, you look at the I think it's the film. Because you look at, like, every Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. A perfect example of that. Once they had film on him, he was nothing. Colin Kaepernick, though, I mean, those last few years when he was bad, I'd say he didn't really have much to work with. Like, Colin Kaepernick's the perfect example of a guy who, if you have talent around him, he's going to excel. He's not going to be a guy who's going to make the team better. Yeah, but at the quarterback position, you got to make those guys look better. Yeah, that's, that's kind of that's kind of the that's kind of in the job description. Mm-hmm. But I, I get what you mean. He had no team in the last couple of years, but he didn't do wonders for himself either. He threw some bad passes, yeah, he threw some questionable decisions. And but you're looking at guys who had hot first years, like RG three is a perfect example. Hot first year, and then people are like, oh, wait, this tape says so, like. Just an example, so and so, so, so we're gonna work on that, and we're gonna pressure him, and he's gonna hate pressure, and he's yeah, gonna try to then, scramble, and then we're gonna get him. Plus, injuries pretty much halted his career, I'd say too. But I'd say Patrick Mahomes having a Deshaun Watson. You look at Deshaun Watson last year, lit it up. If did he, you see the end of that game last week, where it was like it was gonna be hail mary, he ran all past the line of scrimmage and still threw the ball like five, six, like a. 20 yard gain even though it was zero seconds left yeah deshaun watson is having that clear uh second year um, i've never they got that was that was all i never seen a quarterback just not know where he is on the field even with zero seconds left he threw it downfield to a covered deandre hopkins mm-hmm. and he got to he had to get a touchdown and he threw it to midfield i think it was something like you should know that's the last play you gotta bomb it into the end zone yeah maybe you don't have the arm straight but get it close or and don't go past the line of scrimmage. I think that's a pretty fair thing to think about. Yeah, that little honeymoon phase with Deshaun Watson seems to be over. I don't think Deshaun Watson's like bad quarterback or anything like that. He's just having that second year where now we got film on the guy. Now we know what to if do to stop get, him. If he didn't tear his ACL, I think he could have got rookie of the year, though. Yeah, I think he would have got rookie of the year. And they, he was playing really They well. might have been a playoff team, too. I mean, they had a lot of injuries on the defense. But he was like there was like a little spark that he added to that team Absolutely. once he came in. I did have him and John Trey Hopkins on my fantasy team. I picked him up. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, free, and I was so happy. I was like, oh, oh my God, that. these guys are like the great, the best duo right now in football. And then he tears the ACL in my fantasy team just mm-hmm. went down. Yeah. So it was, it was honestly a huge bummer to see a guy with that much upside that season lose all that and now struggling. And um, just I just hope he I just hope he gets it back because like he he he's a kind of, he's a humble guy, mm-hmm. so you don't want to see a guy like that lose all that. And then you look at Mahomes; he's having like I said that Deshaun Watson type year. I'm not gonna go out and say that they're gonna win the division or anything like that. I'm gonna wait a bit. I mean, I got the Chargers winning that, that division. division. Is well, like Chargers are looking good, but that but besides that, the division's kind of weak. Yeah, I think Denver Denver's gonna manage the rest of the season. They'll be in the mix the entire time, just given the defense is gonna win them a lot of games. And like I said, I like Case Keenum. He's not. I don't think he'll be how he was last year in Minnesota, but mm-hmm. he'll be good enough, I'd say. And you get Lindsey, Royce Freeman, and those receivers, so they're going to help him out a bit, too. It's going to be the Chargers or the Chiefs. Yeah. It's going to be between those two. Chargers, like, they look good uh, last year, and they, they have a good upside this year. They're they're projected to win the division, and, like, some even picked them to go to the Super Bowl. I was one of those people, to be that, honest. Uh, they, well, their defense is great, yeah. and their offense is starting to get it. But obviously, the last two weeks they haven't really excelled in that. It's just classic charges, I guess. I mean, well, I mean, if they were in San Diego, I wish they were still in San Diego because why go to a thirty thousand seat stadium just to disappoint more people? Yeah, I mean, that's just a placeholder, I guess, till that big old LA stadium gets built up, and I think they're gonna have the NFL headquarters. Well, they there could too. have to rent it out. Yeah, so they're losing money, I think, on this. Yeah, that's true. But you look at it. I mean, the Chiefs. I know that everyone wants to talk about Mahomes. And how great of a story that is, which it is. But 
when we come back down to reality, the defense, I mean, is terrible. Mahomes isn't going to be able to throw four, three touchdowns, four touchdowns every game, or six he touchdowns six. like he did. He yeah, six, six touchdowns like he did four, on week two. Four week one, six week two. You can't have – yeah, you're exactly right. You cannot have a guy – you can't – uh, count on that to happen. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I think the defense eventually will bring them back down to earth. I mean, but eventually, I mean, I think they'll come back to being a But against this 49ers secondary, I oh, yeah, think he's going to have another six touchdown game. Like, the if he, if Stafford looked like how good he did again last week, mm-hmm. um, the Niners better step it up. Like, yeah. this is their, this is their, like, they played all right against Minnesota. They almost had that game, but they had some costly interceptions by Garoppolo, and and they didn't play to their best. This, if they don't, if the offense doesn't click, this game's over. Yeah, this is gonna be an offensive game because both those defenses are very, very poor. Yeah, I can see Kansas City putting up probably about thirty at least, probably. I mean, given how well they played, the Niners just have to catch up with them in points. I think it's just gonna be points matchup. And Mahomes, I can totally see him getting seven touchdowns and tying that. (laughs) The record. I mean, I think one thing I like about Mahomes too is he's not looking at just Tyreek Hill. He's not looking at just Travis Kelsey. He's going. He's oh, yeah, spreading he's it out. Everybody. Yeah, because I know Demarcus Robinson had a touchdown. Chris Conley. He's smart. He's yeah. a smart. You can tell he he's very intelligent. When yeah, it comes you can to tell those that. players too are buying into him. But I think that's all we got for today. Today, me and Jeff talked um, Thursday night football. We got Jets Cleveland. We talked Detroit Lions being a bad team in that second segment. Third segment, we talked Steelers, Saints, and Giants. And then for this segment, we talked a lot about the AFC West. So thanks for listening to the GSMC Football Podcast. I want to thank Jeff again for coming on. He'll be back on again, uh, again tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah, we'll be yep. here tomorrow. So Jeff will be back tomorrow. We'll be preview. We'll be recapping the Thursday night game from tonight, obviously, tomorrow. And looking ahead to the Sunday night game between the Lions and Patriots. And also making our picks for all the other games going on on Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, thanks for listening to the GSMC Football Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program